Chapter 5 Unveiled Secrets Hermione sat solemnly in the Gryffindor common room, shuffling a pack of muggle-playing cards. It sounded odd, but she found it rather comforting when she was angry. It reminded her of her parents. Dad had taught her all the different games he could play with them when she was little. They would spend hours on end laughing, game after game, until they were too tired to continue. A single tear slid down Hermione's face, which she quickly wiped away with her sleeve. Instead of dwelling, she spread the deck out along the table, tracing her finger along each card carefully. When she got about halfway, it stopped on one card in particular, which caught her interest. The King of Hearts. She snorted bitterly as the image of Draco popped into her head. You could call him the King of Bloody Hearts with the way he had every girl at his feet. But not her. Never her. She sighed, placing the cards on the side and making the decision to go to bed and skip dinner. There was no point seeing Ron and Harry anyway. They'd been acting strange lately, and quite frankly, she'd had enough of it all. Everything will go back to normal by tomorrow, she muttered to herself. But just as she was about to head up to her dorm, Ron strode into the room. His happy expression immediately faded when he spotted Hermione standing on the stairway. Great, just fantastic. The girl gave him a weak smile, which was returned by a sulky glare. Ron was really not in the mood to speak to her right now. Ron, can we talk? Hermione asked quietly. What is it? he muttered. Hermione let out a deep sigh and walked slowly back down the stairs towards him. Can we please just forget all this stupid Malfoy stuff? she breathed out. Honestly, I don't know what's been going on lately, or why he's interfering, but everything's going to... Ron turned to Hermione with a mixture of amusement and disgust. Oh, I see. So you're allowed to blatantly lie to my face and then we can just forget all about it? He sneered with such aggression that Hermione took a few steps back. And don't even try to deny it. I know what you and Malfoy were really doing. Hermione eyed him fearfully. There was no way he could possibly know. Draco wouldn't tell. And besides, no one had even caught them. Is that so? She replied in a shrilly, quivering voice. And what may that be? Percy told me he'd found two discarded brooms on the playing field the other night. He asked if I knew anyone with a Nimbus 2001 who'd been up after hours. He snarled. Hermione turned very pale as Ron contained his story. Tell me, Hermione, who do we know that was out out of bed after 10 p.m. yesterday who owns a Nimbus 2001? She didn't respond. Oh. That's right, Malfoy, he spat. And who was supposedly with him? It's all adding up now, isn't it? Hermione shook her head so hard she thought it might fall off. It's not how it sounds, Ron. We're not even friends. We just had an argument a few minutes ago, she protested. Nothing's changed. Ron glanced at the deck of cards beside him. Is that why you got these old things out? The boy laughed bitterly, picking them up and tossing them from hand to hand. Hey, put them down, Hermione hissed, trying to snatch them away. Seriously, Hermione? It's just a stupid deck of cards, Ron snorted, slamming them down and causing them to scatter across the floor. Don't be pathetic. Hermione's brown eyes rimmed with tears of betrayal. I hate you, Ronald Weasley, she screeched, pushing him backwards. Why are you being like this? The boy growled as she dropped to her knees, desperately gathering the cards into a bundle. I'm not the lying traitor who goes on secret dates with the enemy, he spat, standing up abruptly and pacing angrily towards the door. It was not a date, she bellowed, her body shaking in rage. Now leave, I don't want to speak to you anymore. This is my common room too. I said leave. Run grunted, storming out of the room and slamming the door behind him. He had every right to be mad. Hermione was a liar and a traitor, but she'd come crawling back tomorrow when she realized what she'd done. And don't come back! Hermione was left alone, slowly picking up each card off the floor. Ron knew how much they meant to her. Now they were scuffed and torn. She placed them carefully in a drawer before taking a deep breath. Everything's okay, she breathed, but she could feel her vision blurring. And before she had the time to pull herself together, hot tears were spilling from her eyes, streaming down her flaming cheeks. She'd lost one of her best friends, all thanks to that stupid cow of a boy Malfoy. 
Why couldn't he just stay out of her life? Hermione sped out of the room across the hallway through the courtyard, down the steps and towards the lake. A few people shot her confused looks as she pushed her way through the crowds of students, pink-faced and sobbing. But she was past the point of caring. The girl slowed down when she arrived at a huge mess of bushes, beginning to pick her way through a shrubbery towards a little opening. When she finally pushed through the last bit of bush, she stumbled out into a small area of grass that looked out onto the lake, shaded by a beautiful willow tree. The girl took in a gulp of fresh air, feeling her paws slow down to a regular beat. She was almost certain she was the only one who knew this place. The lake was her favorite spot to sit and read, or just to get lost into her own thoughts. It was like her own little getaway. Hermione let the breeze brush against her face cooling her tears as she stared out into the black pools of the lake. She could feel her sobs slowing to small hiccups and then to sniffs. The girl picked up a small flat rock and skimmed it across the cool water, bringing her knees up to her chin before doing so again and again, getting more sloppy each time. Yet another thing Malfoy was probably better at, she thought to herself grumpily. She pictured his sneering expression staring down at her and longing to slap it off. What an arrogant git, she muttered under her breath. And then, as if by some extremely convenient case of chance, she heard a voice even more chilling than the breeze coming from behind her. That's not how you skim rocks, it sneered quietly. Honestly, I've never seen such a lousy effort. Hermione turned back in shock forgetting her tear-streaked face and blotchy red eyes. Do you ever just go away? she spat. Or do you just like making me miserable? Draco stopped grinning and clamped his mouth shut tightly. Granger was crying? Why? For once, he didn't seem to know what to say. His mind was telling him to walk away with a scoff, but he felt obliged to at least say something. Um, are you all right? he asked awkwardly still keeping a hint of sarcasm in his tone. Does it look like I'm all right? She hissed, wiping her face furiously. Not particularly, he said, but a slight curiosity was creeping over him. What happened? Why do you care? She scowled. I thought being around me damaged your status. Draco opened his mouth to retaliate, but remembered why he'd said it. Why are you even here? He eventually asked. This is my spot. He was surprised to find Granger there. He thought he was the only one who knew about the place. Why are you here? She shot back. This is my spot. She hated that Draco could see her crying, knowing the enjoyment he was probably getting from it. I found it first, he replied dryly, and I come here to think, if you must know. Hermione looked at him wide-eyed momentarily, before resting her chin back on her knees in surrender. Me too. Draco glanced at the girl, who didn't look back. He let out a sigh of annoyance instead of staring out into the depths of the water. She was a lot harder to hate when she was crying. Hermione felt a twinge of desire to tell Malfoy about the argument. Draco hated Ron with a passion. She figured it might feel good to vent to someone who felt the same as her. After all, what did she have to lose? It's Ron, she finally blurted out. Draco shrugged. I could have guessed. He knows, she sighed. He knows what we were doing last night, and he's not happy. Draco took a few seconds to process this information, furrowing his brow. How? he frowned. That's not possible. Percy, he told him about the brooms, and Ron obviously knew one was yours, she mumbled. Fantastic, he grunted. Hermione looked miserable. Her usually bright face was sunken and gray and Draco wondered if Ron was the only reason she was so upset. Anything else? Well, he ruined my deck of cards. Hermione felt her cheeks go bright red. She hadn't planned on telling Draco about the playing cards. She was certain he'd make fun of her. Your deck of what? He frowned, a small smirk growing on his lips. For Merlin's sake. Well, I have these playing cards, she began quietly feeling herself getting hotter and hotter in the face. And before you're an idiot about it, my parents got them for me and... They help you feel connected to them, Draco finished, already assuming the conclusion, right? 
He'd stolen the words right out of her mouth. He'd spoke so casually about it, as if he didn't find it much of a big deal, or pathetic like Ron did. Yeah, she nodded. Draco glanced at her once more. Truth be told, Granger didn't seem too hard to get on with, but that was beside the point. He wasn't prepared to change how things were all these years. It would feel wrong, and everything would have to adjust to it. But Granger wasn't just upset. This was about her parents, which was something he could relate to. No matter how much the girl jarred with him, he pitied her. After a long while, he got up and brushed himself off, beginning to walk up the slope towards the castle. But before he disappeared into the shrubbery, he turned back one final time. Granger? Hermione looked over her shoulder to see Draco standing at the top of the slope. Yes, she replied. Draco's expression held no emotion, but it felt sincere. Just so you know, if we were friends, I'd probably tell you that Ron's a git and you could do better. Hermione's lips parted slightly. What? Draco wasn't quite sure why he'd said it. But instead of continuing, he took a deep breath and plastered his usual sneer across his face. But we're not, so don't take my word for it. Malfoy spun on his heel and strode through the trees, leaving the girl with a purposeful seed of doubt. Hermione watched in complete bewilderment. Why was it every time he said something non-confrontational, he had to go and cover himself up? Despite the annoyance, she couldn't help but feel a small smile tugging at the corner of her mouth. I can do better than Ron.